Hi, it's Dwyer. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is September the 7th, 2019. Let's talk boxing. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's talk about a fight that delivered for us. It's a fight you need to look at from time to time to figure out the fighters. Right? Excellent fight. Um, Luke Campbell, an 8 to 1 underdog against Vasily or Vassal, depending on your language, Lomachenko, who was an overwhelming favorite. In the pre fight video here, I made it on August the 14th, 2019. It's still up, as all of the pre-fight videos are. I suggested that gamblers take the over eight and a half rounds. The fight went the distance, right? Nice cash on a fight where one guy was an eight to one underdog. Now, Campbell is a taller, very good Olympic gold medalist. He's a technician. By that I mean these guys are not random. They're doing things and have a plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D. They have a sequence laid out. So in Campbell's case, he has a very good jab. He's taller than most people in his weight class. He has a very good jab. He sticks the jab out there to keep you outside. If you slip the jab, he has something behind the jab waiting for you. Right? If you don't slip the jab, he's going to move around and he's going to set up straight right hands. Very crafty fighter. Right? Can outbox most opponents. But make no mistake. Lomachenko is one of the great fighters of this era. He owns a part of this era. Right? Lomachenko, in terms of feet, the ability to move around the ring, Lomachenko has very few peers. Right? I personally think Manny Pacquiao has the best feet in boxing. But let's just say Lomachenko is very much in the conversation. Right? We'll put him in the paragraph. When he fights guys who are taller than him especially, right? think, and I'm talking about guys who are technicians, because those are the guys Lomachenko prefers fighting. Think about some of his recent fights. Pedraza, taller technician. Jorge Linares, taller technician. Luke Campbell, taller technician. Right? Technicians aren't in there just looking for opportunities to throw bombs on you. Right? They have a method. When Lomachenko is in with a technician, you'll notice that he just moves better than them. Right? Technicians are rehearsed. Lomachenko, who himself is a technician, who himself can outbox you. In other words, it's a given off of Loma's feet and off of Loma's size. Loma is shorter and knows how to fight shorter, that he's going to slip a jab. You'll notice against Luke Campbell, Loma is routinely slipping Campbell's jab coming inside. This is the shorter guy who comes inside, who has the faster feet, who thinks faster, who has the faster hand speed, who comes in and is engaging you. Your reach is longer than his. His punches get there faster. Right? He's a compact puncher when he gets inside. He's not winding up and throwing home run shots. No, he's a volume guy. He stops Anthony Corolla, one of the shorter guys he's faced recently. But you'll notice what he does to most people is he wilts them. A high percentage of his stoppages come from guys just being overwhelmed and deciding to pull the plug. 
Nicholas Walters, Jason Sosa. Right? This is a guy who gets people to say no mas. When he gets inside too, he can get underneath you so that he's hitting you with wicked body shots. Right? He's so sudden that some of the guys he hits and hurts fall forward, not backwards. Right? He gets underneath them. He hits them with shots. You know, then he backs away and the guy who's leaning forward to find Lomachenko, who's shorter, who's faster, who moves better, loses his balance and falls forward. Anthony Kralla. Right? So, I need to have people understand what's going on here. Right? Now, I'm a baseball fan, first and foremost. And... This, to me, looks like the split-fingered fastball pitcher, right? A guy who knows that he's more coordinated than his opponents, who's deliberately picking taller guys who are technical, who he knows are going to be spending time trying to deconstruct him while he riddles them, right? In other words, he's using his opponent's strength against them. So he's the split-fingered fastball pitcher. It looks like a fastball, but it moves. Right? Who is looking to fight and then outboxing fastball hitters. The fastball hitters see him and they say, Okay, great. He's a technician like me. Jose Pedraza lost to Gravante Davis, who's a slugger. Right? Different? Different category altogether. A slugger who's not trying to outthink you, is just trying to hit you hard, take you out. Right? Here he sees Lomachenko, who, like him, is a technician, a chess player in the pocket. So I'm sure Pedraza thought, hey, great. You know, this is going to be a game of chess. The problem is Lomachenko plays chess at a faster rate. Pedraza had to lean over to box against Lomachenko. Lomachenko is ambidextrous. He's like Terence Crawford. He's like Tyson Fury. So when he's inside on a technician and he changes from righty to lefty, it throws guys off. Let me also say too, in terms of athletes, and I know this is controversial. But Lomachenko is a guy in training who holds his breath under water for several minutes. You notice the difference in stamina in Lomachenko fights from the seventh rounds on. Right? He's faster than his opponent, and his opponent eventually starts to wilt cannot match Lomachenko's energy level. Right? Just can't do it. So the question is, for this great fighter, and he's great, folks, he's one of the reference points in boxing. We're going to talk about another reference point. But Loma is one of the reference points in boxing right now. You say, best fighters pound for pound. I believe Crawford is on the list. I believe Loma is on the list. You can fill out the rest of the list. Right? I think there's some stealth guys on the list. I don't think people understand how good Alexander Usyk is or how close Usyk is to winning the heavyweight title. Right? There's some other guys, obviously. Canelo, uh, Inoue. There's some other guys who belong on the pound-for-pound pound list, but Loma is the ultimate puzzle because some of the other guys have punches, right? When Terrence Crawford wants to sit down on his punches, you get the kind of outcome you did in the Terrence Crawford-Jeff Horn fight, right? The bottom line in the Amir Khan fight is Amir Khan did not want to continue. Terence Crawford unified the 140-pound title by taking out the other opponent. 
Crawford is such an efficient puncher, no one even talks about the fact that Crawford was the champ at 140, but yet he's fighting at 147. There are no questions about whether his punching power is adequate. The topic's not even raised. It's raised with Mikey Garcia. It's not raised with Terrence Crawford. Obviously, Canelo, in my opinion, and clearly in a way, are two of the hardest punchers in the sport pound for pound. Loma doesn't have the home run punch. I'll agree. Kralla hits the canvas and you're just worried for him. Right? It was great to see him open his eyes again. Right? I'll agree that was a devastating knock knockout. But most of the time in Lomachenko fights, even when he stops an opponent, even when he knocks down an opponent, like this Campbell fight, right? You get the feeling the opponent was outthought and momentarily stunned. You don't get the feeling the opponent was KO'd. So the question here is how do you beat Vasil Lomachenko? Now we do have an opponent's win against him on film. I know this upsets the Lomachenko people, but it's the Orlando Salido fight. And understand, you cannot play chess with Vasil Lomachenko. That's the mistake that Luke Campbell made. But understand, Luke Campbell is programmed to make that mistake because he's a technician. He won the gold medal by outthinking and outboxing his opponent. Right? You'll notice in his fight against Lomachenko, there are long sequences in the fight where the guys are boxing each other. Right? Both guys are reacting to the other guy they're standing their ground in the pocket, both of them, and they're having prolonged exchanges. That's a mistake. That's a mistake. Vasil Lomachenko is one of the absolute best boxers in boxing over the last 10 years. Right? The fact that he has better stamina, is a better athlete, is harder to find, and has faster hands than these taller technicians gives him a decided advantage if a boxing match breaks out. What you need is what Salido did. Salido is a lead in that fight, not a counterpuncher who's waiting to exchange. He doesn't want exchanges. He wants to kill the Lomachenko angles. He knows Lomachenko isn't a big puncher. He's daring Lomachenko to hit him. So he's running in repeatedly, smothering Lomachenko, right? Throwing punches to Lomachenko's body. He doesn't want some chess match up top. He's prepared to concede headshots to Lomachenko, right? He wants to get in there. He wants to land his big shots. He wants to bulldoze Lomachenko. Salido won that fight. So whose style right now would beat Lomachenko? And we're going to ignore weight classes. This fight might not be possible. But I believe another reference point in boxing right now, another one of these greatest pound-for-pound -pound fighters right now, is Errol Spence. Right? I'm not talking about the Spence who beat Mikey Garcia. And that's still the performance of the year for me. Right? I was wrong on that fight. I didn't know Errol Spence had a back foot game and a Larry Holmes jab. Right? I didn't see it because there's a different Errol Spence who made his name. The Errol Spence who beats Chris Algieri. That's the fight I want people to look at. The front foot Errol Spence who throws power shots. That's something Lomachenko doesn't do. Right? Certainly not as Spence would do it. The guy who throws power shots with both hands, who can take you out with short shots. In other words, with Loma, you don't want to throw long shots. You want to throw short power punches. Think Rocky Marciano, right? The guy who can lead, come forward, back up Loma. He's not interested in an exchange with Loma. He just wants to get off a short, clean punch. 
that could hurt Loma or drop Loma, right? If you box Loma, you lose. He's just too coordinated, folks. He's just too together. You've got to roughhouse him. And you can't do so from distance because he's too fast, right? Forget about your jab. You can't hit him with the jab. I thought Campbell, who goes the distance, does a magnificent job against him. Magnificent. Campbell wins many of the exchanges that he has with Loma. Right? The problem is Campbell didn't have Loma's hand speed. Campbell didn't have Loma's foot speed. Campbell certainly did not have Loma's stamina. Right? So Loma is just forcing you to work. You don't get the opportunity to hang out outside and take it easy against him. No, he's forcing you to work. He's coming in. He's changing the angles. He's going righty to lefty and back. Right? He's bouncing. He can come in the pocket. He can stay in the pocket. The visual is terrible for a taller fighter. Right? It looks like David against Goliath, even though David is a two-time Olympic gold medalist, is a multi-divisional champion, and has not lost since that early fight against Salido. Right? So, let's just say Manny Pacquiao against Loma would be a fascinating fight. Right? I would take Pacquiao in that fight simply because as Loma moves around the ring, he wouldn't have a decided foot speed advantage. And in terms of punching power, right? Loma has no punch, in my opinion, as good as Manny Pacquiao straight left. Right? I believe Pacquiao would go hunting for Lomachenko. I don't think Loma would be able to get Pacquiao, to lure Pacquiao, into extended boxing, which is what he did to Luke Campbell. Right? I also want people to get this concept, and I know it's going to be controversial. <sighs> Odds matter. Okay, a fighter can be a great fighter. Loma, in my opinion, is an obvious Hall of Famer. He's clearly one of the best fighters in the sport pound for pound. Understand, some of the guys he's fighting, I believe Jorge Linares is a future Hall of Famer. Right? Jose Pedraza, to me, is one of the best technicians in the entire sport. Loma, of course, embarrassed Olympic gold medalist Guillermo Rigondeau embarrassed him. That fight was not competitive. Loma is fighting excellent opposition and Loma's dominance spans multiple weight classes. Right? He's clearly one of the best in boxing. But he was something like an 18 to 1 favorite in this fight. And just like the betting markets overvalue and I know these guys haven't lost recently, but just like the betting markets overvalue Saul Alvarez, right? Somebody's going to have to explain to me how Anthony Joshua gets dropped, what was it, four times against Andy Ruiz and is a greater than two to one favorite <laughs> in their rematch. <laughs> like... <laughs> How's that possible? <laughs> right? Anthony Joshua overvalued. Lomachenko should not be. Now that we've seen the fight, now that the fight went the distance, now that it was a competitive fight, now that we've seen Luke Campbell win several rounds, Vasil Lomachenko, Vasily Lomachenko, however you want to pronounce it, whatever language you're using, should not have been an 18-1 to favorite over an Olympic gold medalist who had only lost split decisions in a fight taking place in the United Kingdom in his opponent's backyard. Right? We're gamblers here. 
An athlete can be a great athlete. A great athlete. One of the best in the sport pound for pound. And still be overrated in the betting markets. Let me just say. Given that his fight against Linares went into the later rounds, given that his fight against Pedraza went the distance, given that Luke Campbell had never been stopped, the over under eight and a half rounds posted for this fight, in my opinion, was an easy bet to make, taking the over, right? Because Loma, as blessed as he is, and he is blessed, is not an outsized puncher. He's an accumulation puncher. So, take the Rigondeaux fight I mentioned earlier. Rigondeaux quit in that fight. Right? When you look at the Lomachenko record, you're going to see a lot of KOs. Well, you're, you're really going to see a lot of guys quitting against him. Because he overwhelms you with volume, hand speed, and movement. What he doesn't do is knock you out. A front foot heavy counterpuncher who's not afraid of getting hit and losing exchanges, who's not there to outpoint Lomachenko, who's just there to try to hunt him, cut off the ring, hit him with short shots, hurt him. He was down on the canvas against Jorge Linares. Right? Linares then tried to box him after that. Right? Linares channeled Vladimir Klitschko's strategy against Anthony Joshua. Well, understand, outboxing Lomachenko, your chances of winning are slim, even though your chances of going deep in the fight, going over whatever the betting markets over under is, are great. Right? More fighters need to look at the Orlando Salido film and make a decision. Right? Am I fighting Lomachenko to go the distance? Or am I fighting Lomachenko to win by KO? To try to beat him? Right? Because this is a guy who you're going to have a very hard time beating on points, as Luke Campbell found out. I thought it was a great fight, great effort. I thank Luke Campbell for the over, right? I know Luke Campbell fans have been on me saying, hey, make a post-fight video. Just understand, I did make a pre-fight video praising Luke Campbell, right? Let me praise him here. I thought his effort against Lomachenko was an excellent one. Here's where I cast a little bit of blame. When you're the bigger fighter, Campbell's physically bigger than Lomachenko, right? And you're fighting before your home fans. I believe Campbell should have been a little bit more aggressive. He needed to go outside his construct. He needed to roughhouse a little bit. Charge at Lomachenko, and instead of trying to set stuff up off of a jab, he needed to treat Lomachenko like Errol Spence treated Chris Algieri. Cut off the ring in his face, throwing a higher percentage of power shots. Right? I'm guessing Campbell, as he looks back on the fight, realizes that these long boxing exchanges against the boxing master were a mistake. Right? He might have had the upper hand had he tried to cut off the ring and just headhunt, right? Loma wisely is picking taller guys. He doesn't want shorter guys who are going to go to his body, like Orlando Salido did. What I want people to do is to go back and look at Salido's body work against Lomachenko. Lomachenko now is picking taller guys who have outstanding pedigrees, right? Pedraza former champion. Linares, former champion. Right? Campbell, Olympic gold medalist. Right? Kralla, champion. Or mandatory contender. Well, let me just say, right? He's picking A-level guys, but he's not picking 
Errol Spence types. He doesn't want you cutting the ring off on him. He doesn't want you throwing murderous body punches. You notice he's not picking murderous body punchers, right? He's picking technicians who think they can out-technique him. As I said, he's picking fastball hitters and he's throwing a split-fingered fastball that looks like a fastball, but that's not. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. If you have a different take, if you think there's a different way to beat Lomachenko, a different strategy Luke Campbell could have used, I hope you share that with the YouTube com uh, community in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.